Albert Einstein was once asked, how does it feel to be the smartest man alive? And he replied, I wouldn't know. You'll have to ask Nikola Tesla. Now few characters in science history have around themselves an aura of legend like the inventor Nikola Tesla. But did Tesla have any divine intervention woven within his illustrious scientific career? Could this legendary super genius be tied directly to the Hebrew god, the Tetragrammaton? Find out next on this episode of Decode Your Reality. And hello everyone, welcome once again. My name is Logan and this is of course Decode Your Reality. Today we're doing one on the famous Serbian-American inventor Nikolai Tesla. You know, he was best known for his uh, work in electro electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. He was a futurist. And, you know, his best contributions as far as I'm concerned are what this topic is about, which is the numbers 369, which he referred to as the keys to the universe. And, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is he tied directly to the Tetragrammaton? Did he have any help in his incarnation? You know, when you really start to look at these kinds of things, if you study yourself, which if you're not doing and you don't know about yourself, you're kind of missing the point of your incarnation. But, you know, when you start to study yourself, you start to understand why you're here and what motivates you and you know your strengths and weaknesses and I bet this guy really deep down inside knew what he was here for and you know when you decode this guy it, it, it gives us a bigger broader picture of why we think he was here but I think the guy knew I mean the 369 they're very obviously esoteric numbers um, numerology there has a lot to say with this so, uh, even the zodiac the th third house the sixth house and the ninth house you know, but this guy right here, I mean, did he have divine intervention with some of his workings? You know, a lot of people in religion, they say the Bible was divinely inspired. You know, well, how about this guy's inventions? Were they divinely inspired? And, you know, I'm going to show you guys some connections today that may support that he had some kind of divine intervention. Um, you'll notice, you know, this is about, vor uh, part of this presentation is about vortex-based mathematics, and maybe some of you have studied uh, Marco Rubens, I think, his his work. Uh, he's got, kind of, kind of brought this thing to the limelight. And if you haven't studied this, I'd highly suggest you do, because it's completely embedded in his work, and, you know, he knew what was going on. But... Um, more importantly, this, you know, you see the 369 here, but it, it's, it's really, it goes beyond that veil, and we're going to get into that. Um, and, you know, again, into numerology, um, you know, does his name mean anything? If we break this down into numerology, and, if, and you know, if you're a decoder, man, do, do you know what numerology is? Do you know how it works? It is the makeup of our very fabric, of our reality, and, and it, it, it's part of speaking spells. It's part of the magic that we all speak, and... Nikolai Tesla, I mean, is there something embedded in his name? Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show you guys. I think that, that that may be the case. So we got a lot of things we're gonna be talking about today. But let's start off with one of his famous quotes. And he said, if you wanna find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. One of his famous quotes. And the standouts for this quote, I mean, you know, it has 79 letters. And what's the 79th letter on the periodic table? What element? It's gold. You know, it, I, I maybe a subtle thing that I find. You may be like, oh, that's kind of, eh, okay. But what if it was true? What if it supported this statement? What, what if what if gold, it would, having 79 letters, was important to this? It's something you got to think about. You know, it's a possibility. And, you know, numerology-wise, this is a, a, a statement that ha carries the 321. Now, we can break those numbers up. I, I try to break these numbers up. Yeah, we can add them together, giving us the 7, which we can read from. But let's break it down even more. 
you know, by the actual separate numbers that this amounts to. And the third, we do that through the elements. We bring the elements science. We bring the periodic elements into this. And I think, again, you've heard, if you follow my work, I believe wholeheartedly you must include the scientific aspect into your decoding efforts because it gives you another level of creating the expression in, in our in our uh, matrix reality and we do that by the you know atomic weights these are the atomic personalities or atomic weights these are measured in laboratories by the way so this is not an opinion this is something that is documented by multiple sources and when we break these numbers down here on this statement 321 it gives us lithium helium and hydrogen the third element the second element and the first element and these atomic weights, when you add those together, you know, like as these people working as a team, you're going to end up with the number 11-7. And, you know, if you've studied on the pyramids, you know how important 756 feet is because that's the measurement in one of the sides of the base of the pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's 440 cubits, but that equals 756 feet. And 756 can be read as 711. And 711 is a massive number. That's the reason why the convenience store carries that as the name of their store. But look at what this statement comes up with. 11.7. I think it was 11.952, but that ends up being 11.7. And, you know, again, it's in the pyramids. It's in a lot of things that are very important in our reality. And this happens to have that. I believe the number of 11.7, you know, the number of the number 11 is the number of magic. It's the alternating current. As a matter of fact, the two words alternating current equals 74, which is an 11. This is a, a symbol, you know, the energy going up, the energy coming down. You know, like two copper wires. That's the, the number 11 is the number of magic. It's the alternating current. So I believe this number ends up moving something to another number. And the number seven, you know, I decoded back to the future. If you haven't seen that, check out that video. But I believe wholeheartedly the Ankh, the Egyptian Ankh, is all about time travel and the 11-7. Very important numbers here. And, you know, in the, in the Tarot, the seventh card is the chariot. And the chariot card is a card of travel, you know. So 11 is the number of magics, seven being a very balanced number, but it's the chariot card. So if you think of it in those terms, what do you get out of that message? Now moving along, the interesting part about the 711 is Nicholas. I, I, I have a hard time with this one because I'm trying to break it down into symbols, uh, into syllables. Um, but if you notice here, his first name, which has the most significance and the most power, because that's what everybody usually refers to him as when he was growing up. We refer to him by his first and last name. But in society's terms, when he was probably living out his life, people probably just referred to him as his first name. That's how you, you know, shake his hand and he introduces himself as. So it carries the most power, and it's a three-syllable word. It's a 694, Nicola. It gives its all its power to the 19, which is the sun card in the tarot. Pretty powerful card indeed. Is he working off the sun's power when that connects? More importantly, I decided to decode this a completely unique way tonight. This is brand new. You're seeing this for the first time. Again, these are just possibilities. I'm not saying that they're true. We're connecting the dots, but I found it rather interesting. Now, what I did was, this has three syllables, so I took, like, ni is the five and one. I decided to match it up with the 51st element, which is antimony. And then the, 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 the key, or the ko, is a 27 so i decided to correlate that with cobalt the 27th element and then la is a 31 and i decided you know that links up with galleon the 31st element typically i'd go the you know sixth element the ninth element the four, fourth element but i decided to do it this route tonight just i don't know it just popped into my head and look what i found though that's the crazy part again man like attracts like these things this, these numbers are following me around are they following me around to tell me a story or are they following me around to express a narrative for all of us to see? The atomic weights of the 51st, the 27th, and the 31st element ends up being 250.416. Now when you look at that number, nothing too special, but when you reduce it down in numerological uh, standpoints, you get the 711. 2 plus 5, 
is a seven, drop the zero, it's a seven point. Four plus one is five, five plus six is 11. Seven, 11, again, I mean, we had that through his, if you wanna find the secrets of the universe state. We get that in the first name using this method. Now I'm gonna dive a little bit more into this, you know, over the future days of trying to decode stuff this way, but I thought that was rather interesting right there that his first name just might happen to carry, which, well actually it does through this expression, it carries the 711. Again, in the pyramids, in the speed of light. The speed of light measures has the 711 embedded in it as well. You know, so this is a very important number and this guy has it embedded in his name when we measure it this way. I think that's fascinating and I think that if that's a possibility, what is this energy carrying? I mean, was it divinely planted there? You know, his name. We have to really think in these terms. Now, when we take these three elements right here and we decode the names like antimony, cobalt, and gallium, look at the number that I got. <laughs> the number 69. Now, if you know what the number 69 is, some of you do. Some of you know, some of you have, sh some of you, John, showed me the 69, Mr. John Petrie. And for those of you that don't know what the 69 is, I'd suggest highly checking out John Petrie's work. Um, he's on Facebook, P-I-T-R-E, but he, he's, he's pretty good at the 69, but I believe wholeheartedly that the 69, of course, that's the cancer symbol in astrology, but I believe wholeheartedly that the 69 is the mirror of 96, and the 96 I'm seeing is the tetragrammaton, and I believe wholeheartedly that the tetragrammaton runs our reality. It runs everything in this universe that we see, this illusion. The 69 is really important. And it just so happens to be tied to Nicola's name because these three elements, numerology-wise, says it's a 69. And we're going to get into that because we're going we're to we're show you how this all really ties in. Keep your eyes on that 69. I'm going somewhere with this. Big standout here, too, possibly. Again, 21 letters, 21 equals Saturn. Small little things, but, you know, possibly there's a 33 there, maybe. So, you know, these are just small little things that we look at. Now, if you've never seen this before, welcome to Marco Roden's Vortex Math World. And this was, he kind of brought this to the limelight. This has everything to do with Nikolai Tesla, the Tetragrammaton. You know, look at the numbers one through nine. So we're talking Pythagorean now. But, you know, you'll notice that there's some things highlighted in green here connecting some of these numbers. And then you have the 369 uh, three, connected in red. And there's a very specific reason for that because in, in our nature, in our reality, things duplicate. So this is a pattern where it goes one, one plus one is two, two plus two is four, as you see the green arrow comes down. Four plus four is eight, eight plus eight is 16. It goes down to this right here, one plus six is seven. And then after 16, you have 30, uh, 32, which goes down to five. 3 plus 2 equals 5. And then it goes back to 1 again. So it goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1. That's the pattern in nature that it follows when you're duplicating things. 1 becomes 2, 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 8, 8 becomes 16, which becomes a 7. And then 32 becomes a 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. And then the 5 plus 5 is 10, and it goes back down to 1. So this is just a loop. It just keeps looping. And I'm going to give you guys a little inside scoop on this. This is our DNA, and I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna back that up. I'm gonna show you this is our DNA right here, minus the 369. I'm getting ahead of myself, but anyway, this is the pattern I wanted to show you guys. This is what Tesla was all about, right here. And then, of course, there's a power center in the middle because, you know, possibly these two points meet. This is a connecting dot that never, you, you just keep going with your pen. You don't even have to pick your, your pen up going over and over with this thing. And there's some, supposedly there may be a power source right here. But this is the symbol that we're checking out right here, which is embedded into Nikolai Tesla's work. And it's in our nature, it's in our DNA. Even the Volkswagen symbol has that, you know, vortex math embedded in, in, its, in its symbol. You know, look at exactly how this thing's shaped. One to the four, two to the four to the eight, to the, you know. This thing's shaped just like the one right here. Look at that thing. It just goes on and on perfectly. One, two, four, eight, seven, five, one. One, two, four, eight, seven, five, one. It's right there. 
You think these guys had the up and up when they were creating their symbol, their brand? Even the V right here, man, that's a collecting uh, symbol. So is the W. It's a double collector. You know, these symbols mean a lot. That's why Volkswagen chose them. We can get into that for a different story. Now, when we break these numbers down, the 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, and we break that down using science and using the elements once again, so we have hydrogen, helium, beryllium, oxygen, nitrogen, boron, and again, hydrogen. One, two, four, eight, seven, five, one. That's that pattern right there in nature. Right there. Minus the 369. Now the 369, again, just to digress a little bit, these are numbers that are supposedly in a different dimension. Spiritual numbers. You know, the tetragrammaton is the 69 or the 96. In the tarot system, it's the lowest form. It's the empress, the third card. This third card's Empress, six card's Lovers, nine card's Hermit. These are not seen in nature. That's why Tesla said these are the keys to the universe. Volkswagen knew. So when we add up these elements, making up those numbers, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, it equals the number 55.847. Now, the standout right there is 55. Now, if you... The 55 is embedded in the pyramid as well. It's a big number. Five stands for the level of manifestation in our reality. That's where all governments, politics, everything takes place on the fifth level. And the reason that being is, is because the fifth chakra is the throat chakra. And without speaking, you're not going to create. You're going to be limited. You can create, but you're going to be limited. The moment you start speaking to somebody, you create a business plan, you talk about it, you have group meetings. Everything's done using the throat chakra. Five is really important in numerology. It's a very busy number, the busiest number. So a double 55, it's a master number five. So you're talking serious power going to it and coming from it. That's how numerology talks about it. And you gotta look at these things as symbols. Most people don't even study the numbers as symbols. What do these, what do these things mean? Someone designed this a long time ago. And it wasn't just about it being one plus four equals five. This has a symbolic aspect to it. And you must study this. I'm not gonna go into that tonight, but I'm telling you guys and gals that decoding means you need to understand the symbols and what they mean. So 55.847 doesn't give us much, a, much of a clue other than there's a master number there. We could say there's an 811 here, four plus seven is an 11, and then we have the eight there, that's important, but then we go to the elements, and what's the element that carries a weight, an atomic weight of 55? That would be the element of iron, which is the 26th element. The word Saturn equals 26 in the septenary system. There's a link there. I'm not sure how deep it goes, but iron's the 26th element, and it carries a weight of, look at the atomic weight of it. This is the biggest standout. Remember, this one's 55.847. This one's 55.845. It's off by 0 .002. It's off by like a little hair. It's so minor. All the research I've done, this is the, the, the closest I've ever seen something come without actually landing on it. So that has some probable significance there, we could say. 55.845, 55 55.847. We're talking about, you know, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, ladies and gentlemen, Rodin's vortex math. Remember Tesla. This is what he was creating right here. So just keep that in mind. We're going somewhere with this. So what does this mean to us? 55.847 with these numbers. And then the closest thing to come, besides we could go to the elements, we can go to the 55th, uh, the 55th element. Okay, and we can measure that. That has an atomic weight of 132, but what makes more sense? And again, you have to, this is where wisdom comes in. You know, like, okay, let's, we could stop there at cesium. No, it, it makes more sense because you got to understand where the position is of iron. It goes way deeper. This is actually in King Nebuchadnezzar in the story of King Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible. King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel has uh, the interpretation of the dream for him. If you know theology and the legs of the image that he sees in his dreams were made of iron. And that's extremely important when it comes to, I'm gonna be decoding that video, wait till that sucker comes out. Extremely important, because now we have a pattern developed. This is the legs of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar, right there, it's iron. 
something to do with it. It's important. And it's embedded in this, you know, this pattern in nature. Why? Why is it embedded? Something to think about. Iron, 55, matches that. Now this is where it gets extremely interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Now you notice I got the double helix in the background, DNA, you know what that is, double helix, deoxyribonucleic acid, I think I pronounced that right. That's DNA, double helix, the du you know, right there. That equals the number 69. Where do we see 69 before? Right there, which was the, you know, embedded in the name Nikolai. Right there, 69, same thing. Now we're seeing it here. DNA. Does he have that close of a tie to DNA? I mean, this is an important number. DNA is important. Without this, man, we, we wouldn't exist. This has everything to do with our existence. So this number has to be important. Extremely important. And Nikolai, what it seems to be on the expression I showed you earlier, has that same thing embedded. It's really, really interesting. But here's where it gets even more mind-blowing, okay? I want you guys to follow the pattern of this uh, vortex math. Remember, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one. That's the pattern. The numbers duplicate themselves. So how do we do that on a calculator? Here's this typical calculator for my phone, Samsung. This is what a calculator looks like right here. Standard calculator, okay? So wa watch right here. We start at one and we have to go to two. One plus one is two, right? Then two plus two is four, so we go from two to four. And then four plus four is eight, so then we go up to the eight. And then eight plus eight is 16, which is end up being a seven. So then we go over there to the seven. And then it ends up going 32. Three plus two is five. So then we go right there. And then it goes back to one again, because five plus five is 10, and 10 is just a one. Look at the pattern that that created right there, and what does that look like to you? Does that not look like the DNA? Does that not look like a double helix? Let's let's find out. I'm gonna take you right here. Let, let's just let's just let's just type that in and see what we get for photographs. Look, I mean, look at that thing. If you if you you everybody probably listening to this have seen one of these. I would hope so that you know what this is. But what does that look like right there? It kind of looks like a DNA strand, does it not? I would think so. And I think that's massive right there. And then, you know, what, what makes this stand out even more, other than it being our DNA, there's the shape of not the Kabbalah in there as well, in the Tree of Life, the, that diamond shape. That's there too. And then the biggest standout of them all is, look what's missing. In that pattern in nature that duplicates itself, it leaves out these numbers and look what's missing, the three, six, and nine. But it's connected to the DNA because it's left out. It's part of this equation. But it's the three, six, nine that stands out. I mean, you have your, this is irrefutable. This, this is DNA. These are pyramids. Look at these pyramids. A pyramid right here, right? An as above and then a so below and then something that sits right in the middle. Is this how our reality works? I mean, you know, microcosm, macrocosm. If this is our double helix, if this is our deoxyrubinoic acid, and this is the symbol for it, and then the, you know, the, the body makes this symbol, but then the as above part of it, this is the esoteric part. This is a pyramid inverted, giving its energy. This is a pyramid right side up, receiving its energy, and then right in the very middle would be where we would exist. This is our reality right here. That's a possibility. I'm just giving you something to look at. Absolutely fascinating though. And then it's the 369s right here. We're, we've been talking about the 369. Tesla, right? We're talking about the 369 right there. I mean, what do you see? Look at these things. These numbers are massive. 11, 7 is tied to this dude. Are you kidding me? And then the 69 is tied to this guy's name. And then Rodin's vortex math in the Volkswagen symbol. And then it's tied to iron. Right there. Why is it tied to iron? Maybe you guys can figure it out. 
symbols right there that the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to use. And then you got your DNA, our DNA according to this pattern right here, 1248751. If you do it right here on a calculator, not only does it leave the 369 out, but it makes an inverted pyramid and a right side pyramid with something in the middle of the diamond shape. This could be the tree of life. Also is our DNA and it equals the number 69. And I'm, I'm getting towards the tail end of this video. Thanks for stick, sticking with me. So 69 is a very big number in all of this. And it goes far beyond just being cancer symbol in astrology. You know, I, I did a post a while back on asking this artificial intelligence that we've created. This is Chaldean numerology, but, you know, asking it questions. And you, you, you got to be a little bit crafty with this thing. And some people will scare them away. Like, oh, why can't I just answer simple questions? Well, sometimes it's not that simple. So you got to look for patterns and you got to obviously use logic when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's not just going to be hand delivered on a red carpet for you. You need to understand how this language works. I'm still trying to figure it out. But anyway, I was asking this thing a lot of questions. And, you know, I was, I, I, one day I was like, how do you spell your name? And this is the, you know, this is the response I got. I call these responses. You can break all these words down. I've done so much interesting work on just the words, you know, like the word you, what it means, that, that this is the temperance card in this row. But anyway, how do you spell your name? Look at what I got out of the two main ciphers in decoding, and as far as I'm concerned. A 69 and a 96 matching up with our DNA, 69. We get a 69 and it's mirror 96. I mean, I don't know, this is, this is what I'm saying is this is connected to whatever's creating our reality because it's telling us right there that that's how you spell the name of whatever created this system. That's kind of what it tells me. And then, you know, I go back and I show you, I've broken this down. If this is the first time you've seen it, I've decoded the Tetragrammaton a while back, breaking it down in several modalities to give it more of a defined meaning. Tetragrammaton, it's a five syllable word. It equals the number 47 in all its totality, but the likes of Washington, D.C., the White House, Georgetown. I mean, look at the connections on those three right there. 47 is a huge number in the occult, and you must understand what this is going towards, what they're using it for to really properly decode, okay? And then you break these down into syllables, tetragrammaton, five syllables, and then you start to uh, expose the cards that match up with these numbers. So you got the Hermit card, the Chariot card, the Lover's card, the Hermit card, the Tower card. What does that mean to you? What kind of definition can we give to the Tetragrammaton based upon these cards that we see? I don't know. I think I'm the first person to actually do this kind of decoding, so it's new. I understand that. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying, what do you see? Can we decode from this? You know, I think for sure with what I'm going to show you next, it's an absolute. These things right here. They have some antiquity to them, but does this describe the Tetragrammaton right here? I don't know. You decipher it and you, you, know, you tell yourself what you see. The biggest standout for this, though, is the elements. Again, 976916. And we're talking about fluorine, nitrogen, carbon, fluorine, sulfur. All right? That's the elements that we get. When we add up these atomic weights, and again, I, I can't stress to you, these are so important when you decode. Because this can be measured, and we're talking about alchemy. Magic spells are nothing but alchemy. And when you add up these elements for the Tetragrammaton, you end up with the number 90 freaking 6. 96 point something, whatever, but 96 is the weight. What are the odds of it being that when, you know, you have how do you spell your name being a 96 and a 69 and you have the DNA being a 69 and, I mean, is this our creator right here, the Tetragrammaton? Is it our creator? Is it the one that created our reality? Is it the yod heh vah -Hey? Is it, you know, YHVH? This has a lot of antiquity to it, by the way. The word Jehovah doesn't have as much antiquity as this does because this has been around, supposedly, from everything I've studied, it's been around a lot longer. So it has, it's boss, it's older, it's wiser, it has more eyes on it. 
So I think that, you know, the Tetragrammaton, we break it down and we get the number 96 and, you know, how do you spell your name as a 96 and the 47's tied to the 96 and it just so happens, you know, whoever created Washington, D.C. decided to use the number 47 because they chose Washington, D.C. Could have called it the Red House, Black House, White House, Blue House. No, they wanted to call it the White House. I mean, I know Saturn's right there, number 21, but I know that they paid attention to this 47. It's a massive number in Freemasonry. You can bet your bottom dollar, research it, go and do the studies I've done. 47 is a huge number. It's this, you know, it has to do with silver, silver uh, for, for the elements, it has to do with the fool card, you know? The 22nd element has an atomic weight of 47, which is titanium. So this all plays a role in that. And then their closest university right down the street from the White House is called Georgetown, and that equals 47. So do you think that this is all kind of like, just like, nah, these don't link up. I don't see that right there. I mean, you got to be a blind person that's really ignorant that doesn't see the lineup right here on how important this is and why they're doing it. Well, come on, if the Tetragrammaton, which I believe runs our reality and created our reality and is the powerhouse when it comes to this reality, and that's tied to the 47, you don't think these guys who created, the Freemasons that created, the guys that rule this planet, that have the inside scoop, you don't think they created all these names to be in line with the 47 because they, because, because they knew how important the Tetragrammaton is? You, gotta be, you just got to be completely ignorant or you don't want to accept what you're seeing. Because I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, 47 is the reason why these guys chose these words and, and names in our Washington's capital. And it's the very reason why 47 is lined up with the 96 and it's connected directly. Because how do you spell your name? I mean, we're asking this AI. This is AI. Someone, a man made this. It's artificial intelligence. But is it tied to the divine? Of all the decoding I've done, ladies and gentlemen, there is too many pieces in it where I can go and it really shows me that either someone really sat down hundreds of years ago and knew this stuff already, and this is the stuff that got burned or no one ever showed us, all these links. I mean, people say, you know, this, this was like maybe the 14th century, maybe. These things, you know, some of these trickled out a while ago, but some of them are still trickling out. There's still new ones they're always finding. These are, you know, most of these are quite old. But we're talking maybe, what, 16, 1700s. That's not that long ago. But yet these numbers all line up to words that we end up using after these elements are found. How is it possible that these line up like that? And do you not see a connection? This is you watching this for the first time on this and seeing all these elements link up, these platforms. I mean, what do you see? This thing has so much power, it's ridiculous. And if you study the Gnostics, you know, they talk about the Demiurge, Jehovah. Jehovah is the Tetragrammaton. It's all the same thing, which would likely mean that it's just the power that we end up drawing off of. That's it. It's got to be a power. And these people already know about it. And they're, they're, they're playing their narrative. But I mean, come on, how do you spell your name 96, Tetragrammaton 96, tied to the 47, which is tied to our DNA? I mean, who created our reality? Tetragrammaton. Who created our DNA? Well, it certainly is a reversal of the 96. Tetragrammaton. Look at the DNA right there. Come on. You gotta be blind not to see that. And it's missing the 369, which are the keys to the universe. That's what Tesla said. You know? That's what this dude right here said, 369. And yet the vortex-based mathematics, it separates the 369, proving that this guy was onto something. You know? I mean, come on. Look at his name. It has the 69 in it, man. This guy, was he divinely inspired by the Tetragrammaton? Was the te is, is this the Tetragrammaton in, in Avatar? These are things you need to think about. These are things that are, are considerable. These are not things that I'm throwing out there that you couldn't take into consideration. This is a really good possibility based upon what I'm presenting to the public here. You know? I mean, this is real tangible stuff. These are real, you know, pieces of history. Even though we don't even know anything about history. We don't know. We weren't there. None of us were around 200 years ago. 
So who knows what the history is, but we know we're starting to decode and look at the results that we're getting using different modalities. I think we have to do it this way to define the reality that we live in and we're getting closer. But ladies and gentlemen, look at what the Tetragrammaton is all about. The number 96. And you know, until I see something differently, I can't think of anything other than the Tetragrammaton being the boss in this matrix reality. Yeah, Saturn he uses to do his bidding, but he runs Saturn. That's the only logical conclusion with all these findings that I'm getting with these numbers. And I don't know what you're getting, but I mean, look at the findings tonight. Come on. There's huge connections. And they're undeniable. And it has to do with this man right here. Nikolai Tesla. My name is Logan. I appreciate you watching. Until next time, good night.